TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bell. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, this is Documentary Tuesday we missed yesterday, you know why. If you're here, like the video, man. Hour-long reactions, you, you can like it. It takes two seconds. <laughs> And if you want, follow my Instagram. It's down in the description. This is Danny Dyer's Deadliest Men. Season 2, Episode 6. I think this is a guy named Steve something. I'm not sure. Hold on. Let me just watch. Bare knuckle boxers. Gangsters. Drug dealers. I mean, you wouldn't want to stay around theirs, would you? Well, guess what? I got an invite. I'm moving in with some of the country's most dangerous men. <laughs> So we can find out how they sleep at night. This is the cringiest intro I've ever seen in my life. Is this the first time I've actually seen the intro? And judging by this mob, there's going to be tears before bedtime. My boy is a trained actor, and that's the best intro he could come up with. Danny Dyer's Delia's man living dangerously. Britain is pissed, and it's staggering about looking for a fight. Every weekend in town centres up and down the country, the streets are filled with drunks looking for trouble. Okay. Where can you see a lot of this binge drinking carnage? In Blackpool, on some of the northwest toughest streets. Yeah, I'm on my way there to spend a couple of days with a man on the front line on the war on binge. Not a copper, a bouncer. His name is Steve Sinclair, Steve a.k.a. Sinclair. the Blackpool Rock. He's been Black done for GBH. He's the Black Pole Rock. Interesting. He's been arrested for armed robbery. He's been arrested for contract killings, but none of it's ever stuck. I've been shot at. I've got stab wounds. You know, uh, I've had bricks thrown at me, bottles smashed on me head and in my face. I've been arrested for GBH, GBH with intent, firearms charges, bank robbery. They even looked at for murders. You turned him the wrong way. And I've, I've never met a more fearless man. A man with a love of fighting, Steve is dedicated to protecting the doors. In Blackpool, that can be a dangerous job. Now, I've never been before, but I know how rough it can get on a night out. I've never heard of Blackpool. Oh. What Whoa. makes someone do it? What makes a man stand there and be a target for a group of drunken lads on a night out? You know, it's a dangerous game. I'm going to be living and breathing the life of one of Blackpool's most notorious faces and to really get an idea of what it's like to be in his shoes. I'm going to be working the doors with him. Not acting, certainly not for fun. For real. Danny is something else. What I tell you? You would think once you've seen one doorman, you've seen them all really. You know, you've come across the, doorman the in that time. We had some sort of spat with a doorman, so you know, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of doorman. That's all. Oh man, doormen in Chicago are the worst. They be really thinking that's their club. This is not your club. This is not your club. Just because you work out at Export or LA Fitness or, or the gym, don't make you tough either. You big, but you not tough. This is not your club. But I got some door my homies. They cool. And they some real ones. But most of them, they be really running that bitch like it's theirs. Like, and, and then in Chicago, they racist at the doors. The owners tell them specifically to give African-American people trouble. I have friends that were bouncers that they literally told me this. The owner told them to give black people a hard time. It's no cap. The next time I go out and I have any type of issue with a bouncer, I'm going to record and put it on YouTube. I ain't even going to lie to you. I just want to show y'all now. I'm hoping this guy's going to have something else about him. But like I said, you never fucking know. We're meeting on the Golden Mile. It's very different to what I was expecting. It's quiet and a little unnerving. Maybe everyone's still nice. in bed. It looks nice. It looks like California. Um, well, not really. Just always appear. weird these seaside towns as well when it's off season, you know. Looks it's like Ohio. It's just the, the calm before the storm, I suppose, because there's nothing worse than 
fairground rides and candy floss machines. And no one's there. No one's on them. It's just depressing. To be honest. I mean, even the seagulls look like they've got a fucking hump. Steven Sinclair. Got to be a minute. It's a Range Rover in Blackpool. Can't be many of them about. <laughs> what's, his, what's up with him in Blackpool? What's, what's the... Steve. Hiya, mate. How are you? Danny? Very well, son. Nice to meet you, son. Pleasure yeah, to well, meet well, you, nice mate. Thank you. you. Thank you for talking to me. How are you? Um, yeah. Listen. So, Blackpool. Yes. Never been before. Right. Um, I've heard it's a bit of a rough, rough town when it when it wants to be. Yeah, true. It, it can be, yeah, very much so. Look, look listen, I'm, I'm, I'm in your hands. I'll run around with you for a couple of days, try and get a taste of your life. No worries. How do you feel about me going on the door? Oh. Do you think I've got the presents for it? What are you reckon? Yeah. Hey? <laughs> he doesn't seem convinced. I'm sure you're going to look after me, yeah? You want to take yeah. me on a little mission then? Tomorrow, I'll put you on the door. I've got a stab proof vest for you and everything. Because... Stab proof vest, okay. Right, you can be all right with that. Well, no, I, well, it's going to be a bit I, tricky, so. Well, well, I'm in your hands, you know. I, 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 the last thing I want to do is get stabbed. I want, I want to make a nice <laughs> He's shot. Got a you won't wear. Why are you no, scared? I'm sweet. I'm, in, I'm sweet. Let's go. Let's do it. All right, Pop. Scared already? Steve's been working the doors for 30 years in a town that takes no prisoners. What might make you the better man is you might be able to take it a bit more than they can. For a big man, very fast. And got a hell of a punch. Boxing is his first love, and he'll take on anyone. He once fought boxing legend out, Sugar Ray Leonard. This guy is a force to be reckoned with. When he wants to go, there's not a man that I'd put against him. He's a man with a reputation for never backing down and a taste for revenge. If they kicked off at the club big style, if any of my lads got hurt, I'd be out in the car going around to their house waiting at six o'clock in the morning knocking on the door. Surprise. Blackpool is now the unofficial capital of Booze Britain. 50 years ago, it was the destination of choice for the fashionable and the wealthy. Today, things are very different. Blackpool's A&E department is the busiest in the country. Personal assaults occur here at twice the UK average. During the summer, there's an influx of young people, some of whom come looking for trouble. Not like River North Chicago. To understand Steve's world, he's taking me on the door in a couple of nights' time. I want to know what makes this town in particular so dangerous. Tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, the doors here. Are they, are they pretty dangerous here? I'm... You've got to remember, we get people from all over the country coming here. Yeah. They're having the weekends, they're having the stag parties, yeah. the trips, whatever. And they come from uh, London, Liverpool, Manchester. And obviously, a lot of the times... Where am I now? Big I am. I suppose it's the cocaine in it. And yeah. the... the cocaine now... <laughs> which is the, one of the main things that uh, people use. Obviously, people get the cocaine rage. Well, then there's steroids as well. Get a bit bright, All the young kids are wearing steroids, uh, using steroids. Are they? Yeah. Yo, how many you see? That booger sugar mixed with those steroids will give you a monster, huh? Getting pumped up. You, you know, all you have to do a is look monster. Up. Yo, um, if they're using cocaine, they're drinking alcohol, taking steroids, they're dangerous. I don't like the sound of what's ahead of me. But Steve seems like a confident man. I'm just not sure if behind this softly spoken exterior is a friendly old guy or a man with a dark past. I guess I got a couple of days to find out. Coming up, I learned something about Steve that I didn't want to know. Please me some of his family heirlooms. I'm in Blackpool. The capital of Booze Britain with Steve Sinclair, one of Britain's toughest bouncers. <laughs> I'm living with him for the next few days to try and get under his skin. I know that Blackpool likes a drunken tear-up, and Steve's told me that the young people here are not only pissed, but also on a cocktail of drugs. If they're using cocaine, they're drinking alcohol, taking steroids, they're dangerous. Steve's taking me to town so I can get to know him better. The first thing I want to find out from him is what it takes to be a modern doorman. From what he tells me, it's clear that Steve likes to get involved in more than just door work. A few years ago, um, 
we had trouble with the uh, Middleton lot from Manchester. Middleton is one of the most deprived areas in Manchester, where drug dealing and organised crime is a major problem. Where and like Black Boy is a hub street. for the gangs from the northwest to come and do business. You're talking 60 to 100, you know, group of bad. Uh, all up for yeah, it now. All carrying knives, machetes, things like that. Yeah. And um, one of my pals, Sharpie, he gave uh, one of them a slap, stopped them dealing in the club. And the next weekend, they all turned up, didn't they? So. Oh, okay. Okay. They ended up, I mean, they, they turned up for Sharpie, but uh, we ended up tooling up ourselves, but we got shooters. So <laughs> we okay. Being a doorman was all about checking IDs and kicking out drunks. Sinclair Blick and shit? I don't know. Back them all. Yeah. We ended up tooling up ourselves. Tooling we up? Shooters. So oh. Back them all. I thought being a doorman was all about checking IDs and kicking out drunks. Nah. What Steve's talking about sounds like armed turf war. For me, it sounds like it's just like a nightmare. It's just the idea of people knowing where you are. People that want to cause trouble, people you might have a bit of trouble with, know exactly where you're going to be every night on the door, you know what I mean? Yeah. So they can always come back and find you. Is your mentality as a doorman, is it clump them, give them a clump first, or do you, is, it, is that the last option for you? I always liked going in against odds. Oh, really? You know, yeah. It, it, you, you like going up against better. five, ten people. Yeah, yeah. you feel better, yeah. You know, I take some bollocks when I go up against five, you know, t ten geezers, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, if you're thinking in your mentality, you're only going to come out a winner because you've got your game enough. But they, they get in each other's way, Denny. You know. That's how I'd be thinking. I've tried, they, I got jumped by 30 people before. That's the only time I lost a fight. Not bigging that up. I don't condone any type of violence. But two, three, four, five people, I, I probably can whoop them. You never know, anybody can lose a fight, but shit, I'm confident. I'm going in confidently. A winner, because you've got your game enough. That's what I feel. They, they, they get in each other's way, Denny. You know, if, you, if you're literally... If you could pick them off one by one, you've got to be composed, though, in that. You put, so, me and you are in a group of ten of them now. Yeah. We could stand back to back. Yeah. And they've got to come at us. Yeah, one at a time. And you know yeah, that yeah, if you're yeah. banging, you're hitting them. But they can. No, Danny, they don't got to come one at a time. Hey, what, sir, Mr. Sinclair, this is not the man you want to stand back to back with. Your back going to be fucked up if you back to back with Danny. Your back going to be toe down. we be hitting each other, kicking each other's legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each yeah, other's yeah. ways. Yeah, yeah. Of course, absolutely. It's about composure, I suppose, yeah, isn't it? And. Yeah. Uh, not Especially if they drunk and I'm sober. Come on, yeah, come on. I'm definitely one of five drunk people if I'm sober. I don't oh, having that element of fear. I'm agreeing with him, but if it come on top, I'd probably have it on my toes. <laughs> I'll never back away from confrontation, even if I'm well outnumbered. It's it's a pride thing that I'd, I'd rather I get a, a good hiding. Steve's fearless attitude has meant that it'll take on anyone, whatever the odds, even if they're tooled up. So it's no surprise that he's had the odd close call. One night on the door, he took on 20 boys from Preston, a fight that almost sent him to an early grave. I've got here and I've just started feeling all weak and dizzy. And I've looked down and my leg was red. So when I pulled my jacket back, it's plumb from there. And that's... Oh, let's have a look. See the, you see the puncture wound? So it was just, oh, you can't, you can't really remember, but it was just obviously a little slippery yeah, bump. Never it? felt it, never even felt it. Got to the hospital, there's a queue. So I'm yeah, stood in, I'm stood in the queue like that. I've got my elbow tucked in, holding, and waited five, ten minutes. So I got to the front, and then said, "What's the problem?" I said, "I've been stabbed." I said, "Where?" So I've gone like that, and blood spurted out onto her desk, and she started screaming. Anyway, they reckon I'd lost about three to four pints. Okay, Dang. what's your initial reaction to that? Is that anger? Or is it a bit like, right, I've had a let off, because it could have been a lot worse. But you're, you can't wait to get back. Sorry, my baby mama sent me a picture of my daughter. I don't know if y'all can see that. So I'm a proud father here. You know. I got out on the door, is that, is that what it is? Oh, the two weeks later, I was, I was in hospital for nine days. Uh, two weeks later, I was back on the door. You couldn't wait to get back on the door, yeah? We have to prove something to yourself. I ain't gonna lie, man. This dude, Steve Sinclair, he in the sun. Ain't no way you a doorman and you got a Range Rover with a driver. 
Hey, what else you doing behind closed Steve doors? tells some scary stories, but he seems like a nice bloke. He even looks a bit cuddly. I guess appearances can be deceptive. Always. I really do feel that you could um, think that you could get one over on him, and I think that would be a big mistake. That's just from my initial reaction. And I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot more about him, and I'm, you know, I'm sure there is a bit of a vicious side to him. But uh, initial reaction is a bit of a shock, really. It's sort of like your dad way about him. But a bit of a naughty dad. Steve comes from a criminal background. His dad was a crook, and his mum didn't want him following in his father's footsteps. Well, I was born in uh, just outside Manchester, Ashton and Lyme. My dad was in jail for a lot, because he was, you know, like, ex-villain, well, he was a villain, like, you know, in Manchester. And uh, my mother turned around and said, if you go back in jail, and I said, we're finished. So they wanted to a fresh start, and they moved to Portsmouth. It wasn't long before Steve was attracted to the football terraces of Portsmouth FC, but he wasn't there to watch the game. Steve was one of these, oh, he bought the soccer, football, he bought the punt. Oh, he just got lucky he missed that ball. I mean, it's something that never interested me, actually, football, you know. But uh, I've got him a group of lads, the me pals, and we'd go to the match and kick off. And at the end of the match, I still wouldn't know who'd won. They were the Emsworth boys, and Steve was gaining a reputation as a fearless the player. Emsworth boys? It's an ill name. To get grief from the old Bill, so he began boxing to channel his energy. Started looking at boxing. He started to get grief from the old Bill. Bills are the police, I learned that. Because I was getting in trouble in street fighting, and my dad turned around to me, and he said, you're either going to end up in trouble, banged up, or that, because that's what he'd done in his past. So he talked me into it. With little work around the south coast, Steve ended up joining the crew of the QE2 as a waiter, where he travelled the world, honing his fighting skills below deck. When he returned, he moved to Blackpool, where he was an outsider, and began to make a name for himself. I started working doors to uh, obviously make friends, get to know people a bit easier. A few incidents happened, the police came, and uh, I'd, I'd get arrested, get off, you know, get out. And uh, that's how it started. It doesn't matter who or how many they are. What? You'd rather... No, that... What did the bro say? That's how it started. It doesn't matter who or how many they are, you'd rather go to the floor. Okay. And be battered. Then back down. Yeah. We're off to Steve's local to meet a couple Hello. of his mates where I want to find out more about him. When you're in a situation, some of y'all might not have ever been in no situation, man. There's two things that can occur, fight or flight. You're going to have the urge to run or you're going to have the urge to get out. And I ain't never duck no smoke. Never duck smoke. Never. Never, never, never. Even the, even when the odds are stacked against me and it feels like, like why would I do this to myself? Stupidity. Never ducking it, man. Never have, never will, bro. Now that I look at it, like it could have been some potentially stupid situations I could have got myself into. Just all that pride, but... But as we head over there, we get word that there's been some trouble. That the pubs have just actually been turned over by a load of armed police. So obviously nothing to do with us, so we're alright there. Well thank fuck for that. It's, um, <laughs> they, were, they were looking for somebody else who drinks in there and he's, oh, uh, he's not there, so they're gone. Oh, okay. Unless they're after your autograph, of course, but you know, we'll see. I'd rather they nick me to be honest with you, huh? <laughs> and giving old Bill autographs. I never Our seen a Danny police looking movie. for a regular, lovely. Christ knows what this place is going to be like. What do you want? I'd like to you know what. Um, I'd like a nice. I think I'll have a nice pint of lager. Yeah, sit yourself down. Break the mould a little bit. You know what I mean? Do you want something a bit different? As Steve sorts me out a drink, I try and get settled in. I'm all right, I'm all right. I've got the, uh, got the pole cue there, in case it comes on top. I'm joking, why am I even saying that? Why am I even saying that? It goes off, I'm out the door, mate. <laughs> yeah. It's always weird, is when you're walking with a boozer. Camera in my boat. You know, I'm making a film, you know what I mean? It's always like, I always feel a bit like, uncomfortable with it. 
Yeah. Yeah, pal. Thank you very much, Steve. Lovely job. Cheers, mate. All the best. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Steve's very accommodating, but I'm feeling a bit out of my depth here. What, you any good at the older? While we wait for his mates to arrive, he challenges me to a game of pool. Right. I'm only good at pool when I'm intoxicated. When I'm sober, I'm trash. But when I'm drunk, I'm him in pool. I'm the one. I'm Neo. And it's the Matrix. <laughs> I don't know whether to um, take it easy on him, you know? I don't, don't want to whip his ass. It's a bit embarrassing. I'm never going to beat Steve in a fight. But I reckon I can have him at pool. I feel like every eye in the pub is on me. I think the word's out that I'm in town and it's putting me off my game. Oh my God. Get off the sticks, bro. You're good, Danny. Typical bouncer. Get out of there. He won't let it slide. <laughs> Bollocks. Well, I shoot off anyway. We had a good day. It's been a lovely day, Steve. Mine, there you go. Yeah, see you later. We've been having a laugh for the last half hour. But when Steve's mates arrive, the mood turns serious. Pleasure to meet you, boys. Thanks for coming over to see me. Paul, the man on my right, told me how he got into a load of trouble when a punter pulled a knife on him. When a punter? What a... He's in trouble when a punter pulled a knife on him. What is that? He's under his pocket, he's battered up to him, and he's off the control. So I hit him and he's done. Really? It was a one, one punch, that was it? One punch, totally. 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 Oh, okay. It's easy, I regret it, no, I think about it every day. No, of course, I can imagine, I can imagine. But just, it seems that that one punch just that absolutely yeah. ironed him out, yeah. It's, it's one of them things that happened to all of them. Danny is wild, what? I said, so just in this instant, one punch. Absolutely ironed him out. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I get the analogy, but God, Danny, Danny, Danny. We've all had it. We've all had people on life support machines. And it, it's not a case of over using too much force. Oh, what you mean from people that you've hit? Yeah, but all it is is like you bang the guy, the guy, he could have four or five shots at you. And, and you moved away, boom, down, he's banged his head, he's dead. Yeah. I said earlier that you. That's not only how it goes. It's not the initial force from you hitting them. It's them hitting you hitting them, then them hitting the ground, and they head snap back and hit the concrete. That's why one one time I got into it in River North. This dude he said the N word. He said it once, and I was the only black person around. So I looked around. I'm like, who's he talking to? And he wasn't like, he, but they, like he said it. So you gotta be referring to me. You gotta be talking. to me. And then I said, bro, calm down. Bro. It's not even... Then he said it. Oh, no, I'm not talking about you. You're a pretty N-word. I thought that was hilarious. I laughed. It's hilarious. <laughs> but then I just walked away. Somebody else came and hit him in his stuff. And then he said it ten more times. N-word, N-word, N-word. Just like this. N-word, 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 N-word. I was like, okay. Bink. One time, that's how I got this scar. I think it was this one right here. I have a scar right here. I don't know if you can see it. His tooth slipped me. I had seven stitches. Uh, then I caught him. I hit him and I caught him. <laughs> and I gently let him down. Because <laughs> I knew he was going to sleep when I did. I gently let him down. So he wouldn't hit his head like that. That was the point of the could story. easily underestimate this man. And I think I just have. These guys speak about hurting people like they're talking about the weather. It's disturbing. But what I'm about to hear really worries me. The police actually came and gave me a, a written death threat a couple of, about, about six weeks ago. Saved me life with it. Because when the police get there, they've got to tell you, you know, they? No, but they've come and given me in writing. But they said, the threat is imminent. And I, they said, can we do anything to help you? And I said, well, yeah, I said, tell me who's fucking give you the... Oh, no, we can't do that. So if they told me who'd, who'd give me the death threat, I could sort it out myself. 
Well, so they know who it is, but they're just saying, right, well, well, basically, you've got a death threat. Apparently, it's imminent. See you later. Mm-hmm. Oh, there you go. I'll tell you. They're bringing it up to, like, ruin your room. They're trying, they're trying to get you to do something. They're trying to get me to go over and do somebody to, to nick me. But if we pull the wrong people, we get somebody who's a, you know, we get nicked. Steve's obviously hurt a few people. They want revenge. And it's making me worry about staying it is tonight. I'm happy to do a few pictures and autographs, but behind the smiles, I'm Fear. concerned. <laughs> um, I'm a bit freaked out by the idea of me sleeping around his house. Right? And he's telling me he's just a he's got a death threat and it's imminent. So so the police came and told you you got a death threat and it's imminent. First of all, how do you know it's imminent? They told you 100. So, so somebody came and threatened somebody's life and you let them go? Can't you go to jail for that? Didn't that soccer player just get locked, arrested for that? Uh, you know, it's made me a bit paranoid. I don't know whether I want to stay around his house or not. I don't know, I just... I've got to think about myself, I've got to think about the fact that I've got two kids, you know what I mean? Do I want to be putting myself in that situation? You're going to you know, do it. I've got to worry about, obviously, is, you know, I don't want to upset the geezer, you know? And the fact that he's inviting me around his house, he's going to let me stay. But, if, you know, for me to go, no, I'm not going to stay, it's just something I'm going to have to deal with later on, you know? But, um, you know, other than that, I think he's a lovely geezer, but fucking death threats, you know what I mean? I don't need it. <laughs> Danny, no one's going to touch you, my boy. You're too high profile. No one's going to touch you. <laughs> Death threats aside, I'm keen to get to Steve's house and meet the family. I just hope they're not as intimidating as the guys I met in the pub. This is my humble abode, so. Nice little plot. It's a nice area, though, because it's interesting that you're just a couple of minutes down the road, you're, you're away from all the nuttiness, isn't you? Yeah, yeah. When I step into Steve's house, I'm introduced to the family. Christy, his youngest, Kelly, the eldest, and Tani, his wife of 27 years. This is definitely not what I was expecting. Once I've met everyone, Steve goes to get changed, and I have a chat with his girls. I want to know who the real Steve Sinclair is. But his, his first attitude isn't to slap somebody straight. No, no, You know, no. you're talking and everything, and then they just go like a bit too far. Of course she's going to say that. She's his wife. And what's it like for you two with um, boyfriends? Basically, they just find out you're Sinclair's daughter. They're like either do a runner or really? a bit scared. So he's got yeah, that well, reputation. I'm telling you that introduce you to the friends as instead of saying, oh, this is my girlfriend Kelly or this is my girlfriend Christy. It's, mm. oh, this oh, this is, is my Steve. girlfriend, Steve Sinclair's daughter. Oh, oh, OK, he's gone for, for the casual look. <laughs> After a brief chat, Steve's back and he takes me to see where I'll be spending the night. Oh, it's lovely. What, I don't know what it's like. It's very, very cottagey, Steve. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, it's... White like cottagey, you know? The, the woman's touch, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, Are definitely. Nice view oh, of actually, no, it's York, nice. not a Yorkie in sight. Yeah, hold on, what's that? Oh, look. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> I knew, knew there'd be one. I knew there'd be one knocking about. There had to be one. Yeah. If I play up later, you will end up in that cupboard, I suppose, will I? Yeah, it's, it's one of the... I'm a strong believer in the woman runs the home. She has it as she likes it. Steve's old That's school. You wouldn't catch him doing the ironing, but he's still out. As long as I can have like a man cave. That's proud. Who's this? Uh, Just a random yeah, picture? Random picture, yeah. Another Yorkie in here, I know. Yeah, it's another yeah. Yorkie. Everywhere you turn, Yorkies, look. I, li- I, li- I like the art you've got going on. Oh, yeah, here. he's dead now, the artist. I'm loving all this. Friend, friend of ours, who's good. What's his name? Like, uh, Lawrence? No, Larry. Larry Rushton. Larry Rushton. Yeah, Brilliant, dead. isn't he? Steve's got a few old things. But not the kind of stuff you'll see on the Antiques Roadshow. Because it just pulls out like Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it'd be I knew it. I knew it'd be something going on. That's a lovely little uh, stick you got <laughs> Just a little boy, you have to slot it in properly. Oh, well, I know I know I know how to slot things in, Steve. I know how to slot things in. Then somebody comes calling. <laughs> oh, okay, so you can keep that at the door, just in case. What is that? Anyone comes knocking a knock back. Well they won't be knocking again, will they? Steve Sinclair, a.k.a. Thor. You go hammer like I'm Thor. Oh. Well, I certainly won't be knocking with their fucking hands. OK. Steve's place is a cosy family home, but that hammer by the door really brings back to me his other life outside the house. 
I'll leave that next to you. So far, it's been a strange day for me. As we sit down for dinner, what is that? I'm thinking about all I've seen and heard. The beatings, the stabbing, the death threat, the no hammer. Threat. No, I mean, I'm no, trying uh... to put on a brave face. Everyone around the table is relaxed, except me. Coming up, I discover how Steve's reputation brought violence to his front door. There's a geezer there, like that. On his own? Or yeah, on his own, own. on his own, yeah, on his own. And I transform myself into Danny the Doorman. Wait a minute, what's going on? He about to get in costume for this? This doesn't do anything but get better and better every time I watch it, I swear. I'm staying in Blackpool with Steve Sinclair, a bouncer not to be messed with. He's been stabbed, beaten and shot at. He's pissed off a lot of people. Now he has a contract out on his life. I'm at his place and I've just had a nice bit of Lancashire hot pot, but I'm getting worried about a possible attack. No, 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 none of that. What you, oh, hello, come here. Hello, you, you ever seen a cockney before? Never seen, never seen a cockney, have you? Say hello to Teddy. As I'm bonding with Steve's four Yorkshire Terriers, he puts on an extraordinary video. I've been told he was fearless, and he proves it by showing me an exhibition boxing match between himself and Sugar Ray Leonard. I mean, how are you feeling there? Can you remember, Steve? I mean, nervous. You, 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 not Very nervous, yeah. For people who died in Sugar Ray, I know y'all not. Sugar Ray had it back in the day. Sugar Ray was it. Oh. I was feeling like that. I'm thinking, fuck it out. Like, oh, shit, shit, shit. Best experiences in my life in the sport, you know, like sporting sense, you know. I mean, it, it ranks up very high with, with, you know, having my daughters and things like that, you know. At the time, Steve, an amateur boxer, was working as a waiter on the QE2. Sugar Ray was a passenger and then welterweight boxing champion of the world. Originally, the fight was meant to be a bit of fun. The champ had had a recent eye operation and Steve was warned to be a bit careful. But his competitive spirit got the better of him. Started increasing my punching power to his body and I was lifting him off the ground with some shots. Didn't phase him at all. And then he's moved around, bam, and I hit him, got him right in the eye. You know, his, his head's gone back. What had originally meant to be a bit of fun suddenly turned nasty when the champ decided to teach the amateur a lesson. He says to me then, he says, are you all right? I went, yeah. yeah. He says, you're not now. <laughs> Three shots, so play. Yeah. He says, you're all right? He went, yeah. And then he's fucking hell, what a liberty. How was that shot, Steve? That's the trick, man. Boxing, bam. It's not all face blows. It's not all facial. You can get that body. You can pee in blood for a week or two, bud. Hey, yeah. Can you remember the feel of the force of that shot? Every time oh, I he hit it, that I man. The shot, Steve. Look how hard he hit him. Feel of... This is a real hit. Look. Opened up. The force of that shot. Every time I watch it, I feel it. Yeah, you got it. Just took my breath away completely. They're lifting me up here. He's saying to me, breathe, breathe. I said, I'm trying. Proper punch to the rib. No, it's horrible, isn't it? Well, listen, well, well, this, this, what's his number? I'll make the call. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make the call. <laughs> Steve is willing to take on anyone, but I wonder is this fearlessness or recklessness? Yeah, or could that's this have a, led to a fine death line. Threat? And this threat became very real a few weeks ago when someone tried to kick his door in in the middle of the night. There's a geezer there, like that. And he had a hoodie up and all that. And after that, it's fucking you. Please don't ever, like. It's a dumb thing to say, but I'll be wet. Like, mama, kick this dough. You're not gonna have, you're gonna leave footless. There's gonna be a hole in that foot. Look, I'm trying to open the door, but it buckled the door, so I couldn't get through. Your initial reaction is to get out there and fucking do it. On his own? Or yeah, didn't you don't know? Own, on, his own, yeah. on his own, so. Fuck. So obviously to me, he's either carrying something or waiting for me. If I'd have turned the lights on inside, it would see through the glass. So he might have had a pop, you know. But, cool. yeah. So I would say that anyone's gonna come to your fucking door, your door, yeah, it's gonna have it's gonna have something wrapped, but you're not gonna come with their bare hands, are they? Right, I've made up my mind. You know what's really freaked me out is this whole Oh, death threat thing, right? For me, it's a massive thing. Right. Now, for me to stay here, you know, 
and I'm sure, and I know nothing will happen. I don't know, you never quite know, but you've invited me in your house, you know, you've got a bed upstairs, you've, you've laid it all on for me. But yet I've, you know, it's just that, it's that letter from the old Bill. It's from the fucking old Bill. Just my own peace of mind. I'm going to go stay at an hotel, yeah, and I'll, I'll come back in the morning. Yeah. What if I come back here and have a bit of breakfast with you, mate? Of course, yeah. Is that OK? About 8 o'clock, something like that. Thanks, Steve. I really appreciate it, mate. See you later. Then, OK, you know what? You got to protect the brand. Danny Dyer is clearly a brand when this was going on. He was a brand, high-profile dude. This is important. Like, he... He protected himself. He's not from the streets. He's not built like that. I get it. You're not built like that. You got on a leather jacket. You're not built like that. So I don't I don't take away no points, but this, this is funny. <laughs> Look how you I feel bad. Up, walk of I think shame. I've made the right decision. I think I've learned a lot about Steve today. I've seen his soft side and had a brief glimpse of the nasty side as well. But the contract on his life has freaked me out. I know it's unlikely anything's going to happen, but it might. And I'm not prepared to take the risk. I'm very glad to be heading to a hotel. It's not my death rate at the end of the day. It's his death rate. You know? It's not my fucking problem. Why should I put myself on the front line for it? This might be a selfish thing to say. No, that's, um, that's, so yeah. that's crazy, he just said. That's crazy. I did. Get that to yourself. Okay. End of. the next morning and I'm going on the door tonight with Steve to see how he operates and why he does it. So I'm up early to get some last minute advice over breakfast before he goes to work. And sitting in his kitchen, he tells me some of the rules that he lives by. You start thinking to yourself, oh, you know, oh I might get hurt or I might end up in hospital or, you know, it's a case of... Your ideal controlling. I, I think, uh, how many of them can I hurt before they hurt me? You know, I mean, one of my tricks used to be years ago, I mean, I'd, I'd grip somebody and I'd put their nose in my mouth and break their nose with my teeth. You know, and, and rather than not bite the nose off, just get it and you, know, you hear the gristle go and crack. Uh, just one wee bit of bacon. <laughs> <through. No. laughs> it's not exactly the advice I was looking for. I don't fancy biting someone's nose off. It does intrigue me to see. I swear y'all be going crazy out there in that bare knuckle fight and shit. Like out there for y'all, man, y'all be... This man just literally said he put somebody's nose in his mouth and breaks it. And then I was watching the, the Patty do do it do it Like they biting people too and eating, eating their ear. Like, chill. <laughs> You know, what would happen if it does go off with you? And I'm sure that you're, everything about you changes totally. The eyes, the eyes change. A whole new thing, yeah. a whole new beast. Uh, they always say to me, say the first thing they go, your eyes just change and fucking, you know, like boom, in focus. And that's it. And once you've gone, you've gone. Yeah. This is the thing that I just, you know, I find it really a struggle to see it, you know, because I just think you're such a lovely geezer, you know. Well, we'll see. I mean, hopefully nothing will happen tonight, but you know, it does. There's always a possible. So first day. commercial in 20 Steven, minutes. Did you know Turbo? <gasps> oh my bad. Max is free, no matter. Steve is off to his day job training the next generation of doormen. So I take some time to myself. Wait, what? In Blackport this time of year. That's not a problem. Is doorman training? Problem. Now I need to focus. I'm going on the door later and in disguise so I don't get spotted. I just hope. I'm not saying that anybody will want to. But if I get out there and y'all and somebody try to take a picture of me like this and they put their hand around my waist, just don't do this. We could just stand next to each other and go like this or something. Like, don't put your hand around my waist or around my neck. It's weird. <laughs> I just hope some of Steve's reputation rubs off on me. After all I've heard about Blackpool, I hope it don't kick off. 
time for me to get my head in the game and sort myself out for tonight. Let's go! I like the whistle. Now I've got the suit, I'm heading back to Steve's to get into makeup and finish off my dormant look. He's putting a lot of thought into this, man. I'm telling you, man, Danny's a character. I can see why he's an actor. Funny without being right. funny. Mug. Right. We're waiting around all day. Tension's building now. I just want to get on the door and I want to experience it. So, you know, the time's come for me to start getting into my disguise. I've been told it's going to take a couple of hours. I just hope this works. If I'm spotted oh, tonight, I won't be able to work the door and see Steve in action. I was getting the sew in. What is he putting the wig together, eh? Simon Jordan, eat your art out. You would never think it's me, but I'm meant to be a doorman. Look at me. <laughs> I, like I should be sitting in a fucking library. Oh my god. Definitely looks like a GameStop employee. This is hilarious. Did they give him a mini gold tea too? What the? Well, actually, look quite clever. I like that. I look like one brainy fucker. I look like someone who's. I look like I write a number bod. Now, it looks like IT designer, web designer, something. Web designer. Everybody at the door is gonna try you. See what Steve thinks of the transformation. I know I look about as intimidating as that cushion, right? But I'm not meant to really be intimidating. Just first impressions. What do you reckon? Okay, I'll take that as a uh, to say no more. Okay. And then for the serious Dorman's the kit, stab vest, high vis jacket and some last minute advice. Any tips, anything I should look out for, Steve, tonight? Yeah, I mean, keep your eyes on me. You know, keep that zipped. Because as soon as you open that, people will suss you. But, uh, you know, look as if you alert, vigilant, you know. I think with me, they'll think, um, I'm gonna whip a calculator out or something, <laughs> you mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, no, listen, I know I'm in good hands, sunshine, don't worry, right. I'm with you. Yeah. Now we're in town, the tension is building. It's St. George's Day, and tonight, Black... This is cool. Undercover Danny Dyer. Paul might be up for a fight. It's Thursday night. I mean, I would have thought that the nightlife's pretty lively here anyway, but um, what sort of crowd are we expecting tonight, you think? Stag parties out, or even uh, your work dues or anything, so... Yep, you never quite know, do you? No. You never know, do you, Steve? I suppose that's what it is. And that's what I'm worried about. Tonight, anything could happen. But before I hit the door, I want to see if this disguise is going to work. I've just got to the first place. This, this is the sort of the test. See if anyone recognises me before we go. Man looks exactly the same. I could, he still looks exactly like he's a, like himself. Going to the club. So I'm hoping this is going to work without the glasses. I'm just going to keep my fucking mouth shut, keep my head down and walk in the gaff. After my pool game and meeting all the fans yesterday in the pub, I just hope I haven't blown it. I'm meant to be undercover, but in this aluminous gear, I'm not feeling very inconspicuous. <laughs> Shit, I've been making a nice bollocks. Right. Time for a rethink. It looks exactly the same. Well, I don't know what to do. I need, to, I need another test, really. I don't know whether because I walked in with the cameras that's made it a bit obvious. I don't know. I just don't want to wear these, but I think I'm going to have to. I mean, I just feel like a twat, mate. Let's just try and put these on. Do you know what I mean? I fuck it up. Who the hell you think you are, Danny Clark Kent? You are not Superman. Glasses are not hiding who you are. You are clearly still you. You are not Clark Kent.
What did they do to you for two hours in makeup? You have nothing different. I see you. I see that you see that I see you. This pissed me off, Danny. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to try them on. I just. I think my worst nightmare is people recognise me, and I don't want that. You know. Um, I think. I think I might just try and walk in a kebab shop, chip shop. Just try it again, see what happens. So I think I'm gonna have to go through with it anyway. You know. I really need to experience this whole diamond thing. I want to try and see Steve in action. Let's just put me on a bit of a down at that because I really thought it was it's gonna cold. Work, just zip your know, jacket a all the way up. From a lot of people and. Cover your face. As soon as like I walk this. in a booth, like, Danny Dyer. Danny Dyer. Fuck me, how's this Danny Dyer? Danny Dyer? Well, it is Danny Dyer, but it ain't. I'm not Superman. Let's go and try another test. With a hidden camera on me, I step out into the street to give it another go. I really want to experience working on the door, but if this doesn't work, I don't think I really understand what's made Steve so fearless. Mommy! Result, result, result. That was good, that was good, I got away with it. Stay, stay it all seems to be working really well, I'm made up, until my producer overhears something. You hear that? What? The only guys going to be in the syndicate tonight. Did you not hear that? No. Now it's obvious that everyone in town knows where I'm going to be tonight, and I can hear people talking about me. He's, uh, he's, he's <laughs> Very interesting. People slagging me off. Very strange. I felt angry. I'm glad to be back in the car with Steve. I walked down that alley. Nobody recognised me. I was getting a few funny looks because I looked like a twat. But um, it was interesting because I had a couple of geezers slagging me off outside a pub. It's kind of Danny died. Fuck Danny died. This that, and that. Weird feelings. I'm two foot away. Um, so now we're going to move on now and we're going to go to the club now. Now, I also uh, walked past a few birds who were going, I think Danny Dyer's down the syndicate tonight, which freaked me out because I thought, OK, words got out. But um, they're not going to be expecting me to be like this, I'm hoping, you know what I mean? So, coming up, I head out onto the door with Steve and find out what it's like to be on the front line. <laughs> Last couple of in disguise so I can spend the night, but I've just found out that the whole of Blackpool knows me. I want to just, you know, how it's going to go, really. I want everything to pan out nicely. I, I want to need just, a recap, just you know, get into just, uh, just be a shadow, really. Um, just don't know what's going to happen. We're out of the car and walking up to the door. Now I'm feeling a bit digy. It's a big fucking club, isn't it? The Syndicate oh, wow. is the biggest club in Blackpool one of the largest in the UK. It holds 4,000 people. Yeah. That's over 40 door staff. With all these people, I just hope there's no trouble tonight. As I head through the cordon, the other doormen don't bat an eyelid. How are you, lads? All right, all right. Good man, yeah? I'm relieved. It means I can just concentrate on the job. Once we're on the door, I take a back seat so I can observe Steve. He's looking for troublemakers, drunks, and the underage chancers. As the place starts to get busy, my nerves begin to kick in. Steve's in his element. He's very relaxed. I guess for him, this is very quiet. That's interesting though, Steve. I mean, do you prefer it quiet like this? I mean, it's easier for us, an easier night, but I think you, you want to... Yeah, it's boring. It's boring now, yeah, I can imagine. Well, it's, it's, obviously, when you've got nice people coming in, it's great evening. When you've got this dead, that's the difference. You can get, get to your bed. can weed out the dickheads as he puts it then everyone inside will have a good night if you're looking after the club that's what the idea should be you're looking after the people you know if i'm looking after you and somebody comes and twats you and i haven't done my job properly you know they've caused a problem for me so i'll go and cause a problem for them how many are you expecting in tonight lad hello i'm John. Uh, i think we're maybe 
do you know that? Steve then pushes me into facing the punters and checking their IDs. This is the front line. If I refuse someone, I imagine it could escalate rather quickly, especially with this mob. Good looking boy. Thank you. <laughs> so far, it's all working well, and the confidence of the other bouncers is helping me along. I'm Got me out, cut some Yeah. Get it's getting busier, and there are some lads at the back that might have spotted me. I think mean, it's going to come on top here. I just think I'm going to get caught to see what happens. I was right, and there's four of them. There's a picture here. <laughs> you, you've been caught out, mate. You've been caught out. They surround me. Thankfully, they're armed with cameras and not bottles. You don't get a picture if you don't. I mean, that was nothing. It wasn't even a scuffle. What if those lads had fancied a tear up? You're a target out here, and the violence can come from anywhere. Oh yeah, that's when everybody's fully drunk. All the dudes that didn't get no player is not taking home nothing. They mad, their testosterone is over boiling out the pot. They ready to go. They ready. They parking lot pimping. I mean, they're trying to find something in the parking lot and it's not working out, so now it's about to go up. Here we go. And they're all fucked. Yeah. And they'll get a bit brave and someone's been looking at someone's bird yeah. and someone, yeah. But then I suppose it's not your job then, is it? you just got to stand there and I'm going to be asked, obviously, being a gentleman, if it does come on top, you've done it before, you'll get involved, but actually, you got to let them do it, innit? You can't fight every battle in Blackpool, mate. At the end of the night, you don't want to be getting locked up or, you know. Danny trying his hardest to put it in his mind, to put it in Sinclair's mind. You don't have to fight nobody while I'm here. Just let that sh go tonight. It's over as far as you're concerned. Of course, standing Protect here at the me. front of the club, I feel exposed. If someone's looking to cause trouble, they know where to find you. A problem Steve knows all too well. The modern doorman is still a target. I mean, a group of kids will get together. Let's go this one and do the doorman. You know, because it's a, it's a good night out. I think the strange thing is for Stevie is he don't, he prefers it busy, he prefers that element of danger, he prefers, he can't stand it when it's quiet. Speaking to a couple of the other bouncers as well, they're the same, they don't like it quiet, it's boring. They want that element of, it's going to kick off any minute, which surprises me because I would think it's easy though to just stand here and do fuck all. It's been a good night and I've learned a little of what it takes to be a doorman, fearlessness, confidence. Quality yeah, Steve has in abundance. I'd like to think I've done a good job, Steve. Did I do yeah, a good no. job, sweetheart? If I, if I was still grafting the doors myself, if you came to me, you said, any chance? Just, just, just about the hair doing that hat, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know I think, you know what, I've enjoyed spending time with Steve. I think you're a fascinating person. I think you're. I think what's fascinating about you is that I think you could be easily underestimated just because of your manner. The way you are, you've got, a, you know, you've got a face, you're quite approachable person, yeah. and I think that's where people come unstuck with you. I think that you would, you like, I think you've made the point about, you know, you've got to be nice first, be nice first, you know, yeah. give yeah. something back. I've had a small glimpse of Steve's life. It's an interesting but dangerous one. Jenny, wow. I came here with a preconceived view on bouncers. I, I thought it. they were just thugs From who stopped you enjoying yourself. It. What I've learned is if you've had a good night out, it's because the doormen have done a good job. I never got a chance to see how Steve deals with trouble, which I wish I could have seen. He's a gentleman, but he leaves me in no doubt that he can turn it on when he wants to. The family comes first, always have. You know, but I still like to enjoy myself, have a nice time. I'd like to go on holidays, I like to drive a nice car. So, you know, but as it is at the moment, I'm doing it all legally. But, you know, still got the balaclava. He said, you know, still got a balaclava. I still get dirty when I need to. But tell her, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notifications. Turn on your post notifications. Most importantly, man, just leave a like, man. If you made it this far in the, in the live chat, man, leave a like before you leave. And go follow the Instagram. It's down in the description.